Hey guys, how is it going? In today's tutorial, we are getting started with Test Cafe. We can use this solution to create end to end automated tests for any web application. Test Cafe is based on Node.js and JavaScript. Before we start, I would recommend that you should have a look into its documentation. I like its structure and it contains useful information regarding guides, continuous integration, concepts, and so on. You can find its link in the description below. The prerequisites for the installation process imply having npm and node.js already installed on your machine. Once you have that, Test Cafe is nothing more than a simple dependency. All you have to do is to open up a terminal, initialize npm and type npm install g Test Cafe. Simple, isn't it? Ok, now we have the setup ready with the Test Cafe dependency installed via npm. It's time to create the first test. For a proper folder structure, let's create a tests folder that contains a test file called authentication.test.js. In terms of IDE, I recommend Visual Studio Code. Great, let's go further with a simple login scenario using the QA Automation Practice website. In Test Cafe, we always have to import selector from Test Cafe because it will be used to create the selector elements. The next step is to define the test suite name followed by the URL of the application. There are multiple approaches provided by JavaScript in terms of the syntax regarding this thing. So we got the classic JavaScript syntax that looks as it follows. Fixture dot .page in which we pass the URL of the application. Or we could use a newer JavaScript concept called template literals. It looks as it follows. But before we do that, let's comment out this line. So in template literals, we've got fixture. space back code dot page space back codes again and paste the URL Please keep in mind that if you use a code formatter plugin like Prettier, it will break the syntax. An workaround is to tell Prettier to ignore this line of code by adding this comment just above it. Save the file and everything looks good. Moving on. We will stick with the second approach because it looks cleaner and provides us some other features as well. If you want to find out more about this topic, check out for template literals on the internet. The final step is creating a test scenario. It consists of a function called test that accepts two arguments. The first argument is the scenario title. And the second one is an asynchronous callback where all the magic happens. This async callback receives a T parameter, but you can rename it with anything else as well. The test cafe documentation sticks with it, so we will do the same. Because we use an async function, 
It's mandatory to use the await keyword before each usage of the T parameter. The T parameter will grant us access to lots of actions out of the box that can be found in the official documentation. For example, the first step of our login scenario implies inserting an email address. Let's do that. So we have await t dot type text and this type text function contains the selector as the first argument, then the value that we want to type as the second argument, and there might be an optional third argument, but let's keep it out of scope for now. So we will be using the imported selector that receives the CSS selector of the email field. So the email field has an ID and we are going to use it. We want to insert admin at admin.com and the same goes for the password field as well. The password is going to be admin123 and of course we have to identify its locator. It has an ID called password so we can simply use it in our selector. Great. Next, we want to click the login button. Let's find out its CSS selector. And now we have a wait T dot click, which receives the selector. And finally, we need an assertion in order to validate the expected result. In our case, we could make sure that a success message is present on the page. Let's see how it looks like. Great, so this is the message. Let's find out its CSS locator. This HTML element has an ID called message. We could use that. Test Cafe provides a set of assertions that are based on behavior driven development style. It looks like this.
So this line of code says that we should have an HTML element identified by this CSS selector that contains this text. Nice, we are almost done. But before we run the test, I want to refactor it a little bit. For example, we could avoid repetition by replacing these four T objects with a single one by applying a JavaScript concept called method chaining. It means that we can call one method after another on a single object in one continuous line of code. So we can basically attach all these methods to the same first T object by linking them with dots. Save the file and this is it. It looks nicer, isn't it? We could continue the refactoring process by extracting all these selectors into individual constants. For example, Of course, we could continue with the refactoring process, for example, by extracting these hard-coded credentials or URL into external files, or by applying design patterns like page object model. But let's take this refactoring side of things into a new video, and for now I think that our code looks good enough. Let's move to the final step, the test execution from the CLI. Open up a terminal and if you installed Test Cafe globally, you can simply say Test Cafe. Otherwise, if you installed it as a dev dependency, you will have to point it via node modules folder. The second option is the browser name. You can simply pass Chrome. Firefox, Safari, and so on. The third option is the path to the tests. In our case, it will be dot slash tests. Enter and let's see what happens. Great, the test passed. Test Cafe uses by default the spec reporter, meaning that it outputs the test execution results directly in the terminal like this. We are able to change the reporter to JSON, HTML file and so on, but we will do that in the next videos. Stay tuned!